Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna do an overview of the Stingbox, the IDS Honeypot device, and it's right here. So I got mine in the mail, and we're gonna be setting this up today and checking this out. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and share. And for everyone else, let's have some fun. All right, so I wanna go ahead and unbox this right now, and I don't really have an overhead view, so I wanna try to do this as best as I can and showcase what's in this box, right? So first thing is we get a cool little simple setup and it's very, very simple to set up because I have one on my test network, but this is actually gonna go with my prod network behind me over there. So this is the device that has my cool little logo. So it's uh, powered by Stingbox. So let's open this up. And like I said, sorry, I don't have an over overhead view, but we're gonna go ahead and showcase every single thing that's in this box. And my sticker I already put on my little cage back there and in this box we have this little box here and sure enough it's going to be the power supply so we have a little power supply here and last but not least we have a little network cable obviously we need to hook this up to the network in order to get started so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over there and plug this bad boy in come back and we'll get started so give me a moment all right so here it is it's plugged into my ubiquity switch and it's plugged into the power down there so let's jump back onto the desktop and finish this up. All right, folks, so once you actually log into your account, once you create your account, what we're gonna do, and if you guys need to create an account, let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So we can just go ahead and open, go to stingbox.com. And once you go to stingbox.com, you can come all the way up to the top and right here it says login and register. You just click on login and register, you put your fancy information in, you log in, and this gets it gets you into this uh, sting box, right? So obviously we don't have any devices connected yet. All I did was plug it in. Now we have to configure it, right? So let me go ahead and hit add a sting box using a code. Every single sting box has its unique code. So once you get yours in, just go ahead and set it up. I actually took a picture of mine because mine is set up. So let me do that right now. Okay, so mine has been added. Perfect. All right, so now let's go ahead and go back to the dashboard, right? In here, we have one sting box monitored, which is awesome because that's the one we just installed. And here it goes right now. It's not connected yet. If it takes a minute, we'll give it a minute. So let's, uh, what I wanna do really quick is I wanna go ahead and unplug it, plug it back in to see if that helps. So give me a, just a second. All right, folks, so we got it all configured. We got everything set up and ready to go. So now we're on the dashboard, right? So let's browse around and see what's up. So we have here, we have the sting box monitored. We have alerts coming in. So we're gonna see how we can get alerts. We have active hosts in the last 24 hours, 15 machines, that sounds about right. External ports in the last 30 days and you know, the last alerts in the last 30 days. So let's go ahead, obviously, and click on, we're gonna go from left to right. So we can go to manage sting box. We can see the manage sting box that we have at my address is 192.168.50.134. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and manage sting box groups. What I wanna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and put home office, right? I wanna put home, or uh, oh, Pat's home office. I want to put that just so I know. So Pat's home office, I want to go ahead and create this group. So now all my sting boxes, if I have one for my production, if I have one for my, uh, my test network, and it's in my home office, I can categorize it, right? I can make it a little, little neater. Okay, so now we have Pat's home office here. So now what we can do, let's go back to dashboard, monitor, we can add change group, we can change group by default. We can put it in Pat's group, okay? So that's just something you can do. Like once you're on the home screen, you can see group, Pat's home network, and we can see ours right here. Cool, so that's the number one, right? So the next thing here, we can see alert uh, methods that we can get configured. So I have my email and my phone number here. That's, you know, two different ways. And then you can come down and you can add different email addresses, secondary emails, syslog servers, web hooks etc right <clears throat> so we have the critical excuse me we have, we have the alert definitions let me make this a little larger <clears throat> we have critical so honeypot triggered we have important so new external ports open on the network or router so say for example i open up 3389 on my my server and now anything that traverses <clears throat> anything that uh scans i'll pick up that new port i don't have any external ports open at this very moment at least on that network, right? 
So then we have information. So this is like a new device discovered on the internal network and it's added to the Stingbox dashboard. And we'll see that shortly. Okay, so then we have my default group and Pat's home office group. Cool. All right, so now let's go back to the dashboard and we can see active host. So let's go ahead and look at the active host. Let me make this a little smaller so we can see. <laughs> and then we have all the IP addresses, the MAC addresses, the last time it's been seen, and if there's any open shares. This is a little interesting because this is a NAS device and I do have, I guess they're not open shares, they're, they're locked down. So I guess maybe that's why it's not wide open. So maybe what I can do, what I'll do is I'll, I'll boot up a laptop or maybe a VM or something. I'll create like a, a share that anyone's has access to it's open share and let's I'll see if this uh, this triggers it but we have the IPs the MAC addresses the last time it's seen open shares the discovered name so if it resolves DNS and that's about it so that's that's it for there all right so let's go back to dashboard no external ports so there's nothing going to be here excuse me and then alerts last uh, 30 days. So this is cool. So we can see different things going on here, right? Different alerts. We have the timestamp. We have a Stingbox hacker. And I want to showcase this shortly. And yeah, that's about it for here. Just go down and see if there's anything that looks, you know, nefarious or anything like that. So what I want to do really quick, I, I want to come back down here. I want to get the IP address to here. And we're going to trigger an alarm. So let me open up a command shell. Okay. And where did, that, where did that go? Okay, here it goes. Okay, so I want to make this bigger really quick. And I want to do SSH root at this IP address, right? So that's the IP address of my sting box. So if I hit enter here, if you the first time you're gonna have to say yes, you you know, for your little uh, certificate or whatever, and I'm gonna put uh, I, I'm just gonna type anything, I'm just gonna look over here. And I'm not that good of a typer, right? And I hit enter. And I'm, I'm in. So what does that tell me? There's no password needed to get into here, right? So obviously it is a honeypot. So if someone finds us on a network, you know, as an adversary or as an attacker, you're going to try this, right? And maybe when they're scanning their, their Nmap scans or whatever they're going to do, they're going to find this device on your network. So I want to put like this is a test for YouTube. Obviously, it's not going to work. I want to do like an if config. We can see that this the IP address. We could do an ls ls dash la. See if there's anything in here. We can cd to uh, whatever ssh. We can do an ls. We can do cat known host. Okay, or cd to known host. Nothing. But I'm I'm just I'm just you know being silly. All right. Um, pwd. Blah blah blah. Right. So now we can just exit out of here. So we can kill that connection. So in a few minutes, I want to check my email. Let me go see what's popping on that email and see if anything shows up. So what I want to do is I want to pull this over here for a second and let me go ahead and go to my email and Gmail next. I have to log back into that. Let me move this because I can't type. Okay, I think that's my password. All right, so that's that cool deal. All right, so as we can see, let me see this for a second. As we can see here, let's make this larger. We can see the sting box recorded. This was the fifth, this was yesterday. So I haven't gotten anything yet today, but we'll, you know, we can check that out in a few minutes, but that's the way you get it. You get a little email alert and that's that's it for that. So let's go ahead. That's everything on the dashboard, right? So now let's go ahead and go to the account settings. Obviously, there's your fancy email, your password, your time zone, different MFA methods. You can get email, you can get SMS and that's it. So the onboarding, everything is complete for me because I'm good to go. Once everything is completed, you should have all green check marks here like myself and then, you know, review your sting box, blah, blah, blah. This is not a problem. And then the last thing you do is log out, right? So I'm not going to log out, but I want to come back to my face. So this is the last thing I want to go over, right? Maybe you're asking yourself, who is this sting box for? Is it for me? Is it for you? Is it for my neighbor? I want to go over this really quick, try to make it quick. So if you ever heard of an MSP, a managed service provider, those are companies that provide services to organizations. It can be small, medium, large organizations, whatever you may have. So in a situation why you would need this, right? So as you can see, like if someone comes in with a new device, you can see if it's a new device, if it's a rogue device. So I've seen real life situations where 
a company brings a cleaning lady in for an example, right? And the cleaning lady says, I want to bring my son or my daughter or whatever to help me or whatever. And now the, the son or daughter's tired. They're going to play on their Xbox or whatever, not Xbox, like Game Boy or GameCube or whatever the hell they play these days. And now they need to connect to Wi-Fi. They need to connect to the network, right? To get their game or whatever. So now they have this machine with this device connecting to that production network, right? So now the admin, the security admin, whoever is going to get an alert saying, okay, we have a new, you know, Game Boy on the network. Is that legit or is it not? And if it is, okay, cool. If it's not, what we can do is that's more on the network inside. We can you know, we can block connection to that device because now we have the MAC address that's associated with that device and then we can block it from the network. But it's really, really cool device. It's really neat. I've been using it for several months on my test network and I'm finally coming around to putting on my production network, but I highly recommend it. Obviously, you guys can contact Steambox. You can tell them that you found it from myself and maybe, you know, I'll get a call from Paul saying thank you so much for the recommendation. But I really want to say thank you to Paul and the whole Steambox team for this opportunity to demonstrate and have the opportunity to tinker with this. So thank you so much. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. And thank you. Have a good day.